in four days. Uh, I had previously packed it into uh, three weeks, and that's what uh, the, this book uh, was about. Uh, I gave a series of lectures at PCMI, and those are the notes that came out of that course. Uh, I'm going to be lecturing mostly out of that book, and in particular, chapter two is going to be the bulk of it, and then some chapter five. Chapter one, I also included links in the website to chapter one, uh, two, and five. There are PDFs, so you can read them. I also point out uh, to uh, uh, examples and exercises from there. But basically, this is a tour of what's there. Um, and then uh, I, I strongly suggest you take a real course on elliptic curves, uh, a graduate level course on elliptic curves as possible. Um, I have actually added also, if you go to the website, If you go to the thing about uh, lecture A2, so I've, I've started to build some uh, set of links in here, but in particular there's a set of uh, links to uh, references, books on elliptic curves. Uh, as everyone will tell you, the Bible on elliptic curves is Silverman's book. So this is the book you want to read eventually. Uh, whether you're there or not, that's your goal, is to read that at least at times. <laughs> so we're going to try to get you there, that you're at least interested in opening the book. Once you start there, uh, I think you won't stop. OK. So, uh, so let, let's get started. <coughs> so what is an elliptic curve? over Q is a curve given by an equation of the form y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b uh, with a and b rational numbers and uh, we are actually going to uh, make sure this quantity it's not zero. Okay, so now if you've never seen an elliptic curve before, you look at that and it seems like very oddly specific definition. Why these curves in particular? Why, is, why are so many people interested in these particular curves? So they are recording this, so let's rewind and start from the beginning. Why elliptic curves? So I'm not interested in elliptic curves, per se. I'm interested in all the Fantine equations. Okay? So uh, from the time of Diophantus of Alexandria, from uh, where that name comes from, um, there are many problems that are very easy to state in number theory that end up in some polynomial equation with integer coefficients and the solution is there. And you have to find what are the possible integer solutions to some equation. So there's some Diophantine equation. Like this, uh, where f is some polynomial in a number of variables. Uh, so a polynomial with integer coefficients. And I'm interested in, uh, in solving this equation. Uh, and by that I mean uh, two questions. I want to know, I'm going to call this C, and I want to find what are the integral points and the rational points. So uh, I want to find all the integer uh, solutions, the solutions with integer coefficients. And also, all the ones with rational coefficients. And Diophantus, back in uh, 2,000 years ago, he wrote several volumes of uh, problems like this. His whole book, 
uh, where that Fermat was reading um, when he he started ruining his book and writing in the uh, margins. Um, well, what Diophantus does is like here's an equation, here's how you solve it. Here's an equation, here's how you solve it. Here's an equation, here's how you solve it. And they are all uh, solutions, uh, equations of this form, and he's giving you tricks. Just it's like a uh, compilation of, of, of uh, the greatest hits of, of tricks to how to solve the Diophantine equation. So, uh, so let's see where we are. Okay, solving the Diophantine equations. There are two variables here. Uh, sort of in the study of the Diophantine equations. Uh, there is one right there, a number of variables, and there's another one that is hidden here, which is the degree of f, okay? I claim that all of number theory is this, is solving the Diophantine equations, um, and, 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 and you'll see why. How many, of you, how many of you have had an elementary number theory course? Many of you. So, what's the first thing you learn? What's the, what, what, is, what is the first chapter? <coughs> Linear Diophantine equation. So, you said units? Division. Division. Just learning how to divide the, the Euclidean algorithm, but also just like divisors okay, of, of numbers. Uh, so, so, let's start with. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see how that all comes up in, in here. So with n equals 1, if you have just one variable, then we are talking about f of x equals 0, where this is a polynomial, and this is uh, so something of the form an x to the n plus a1x plus a0, where these are all integers. And you can proven, you've probably proved before, that we know how to solve that. We know how to find all the integers, the integer solutions, all the integral solutions, uh, all the rational solutions, uh, because it's, it's easy to check that uh, if, say, p over q uh, is uh, a rational solution, then what happens? Uh, p is going to divide a0, Probably not, not, not even only f, it just this happens. And q divides a n. Right? So that gives you an algorithm because I can factor a0, I can factor a n, and list all the possible uh, prime divisors that appear in one side or the other, and I can just make up all the possibilities and check what are all the rational solutions. So that, this one is, we know how to do this. This is easy. Okay, so let's move on. This was for any degree. Great. Okay. So far, uh, uh, so good. So what about n equals 2? So n equals 2 now, we're talking about uh, 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 a in two variables. Um, so it's a curve on the plane. So let's start with, let's start easy on us. The degree of f is 1. What is that? Then c is ax plus by is c. Okay, and let's just assume, so it's not one variable that a and b are not 0. Okay, are there rational solutions on the line? There's always rational solutions. You can take uh, x to be any rational number you want and then solve for y or vice versa. Okay. So over q, uh, there are infinitely many uh, points uh, always. And uh, you just solve uh, for one variable in terms of the other and you parameterize all of them. Um, so, uh, five more minutes. Um, minutes. <laughs> um, okay, so over Q, the many points always. How about over Z? So this is what what you said uh, was one of the first things you learned in the elementary number theory course. How do you solve that? That's a linear Diophantine equation. 
you learn how to do Euclid's algorithm, you go backwards in Euclid's algorithm, and you solve what's called sometimes the Zeus equation. That's that. But to solve that, you actually have to develop your whole theory of divisors and your whole theory of GCDs, and then Euclid's algorithm comes in, and so on and so forth. So there's all the theory of divisors, the theory of GCDs, all of it put together tells you uh, that, um, that there is a solution over Z if and only if the GCD of A and B divides C. Okay? So there is a, uh, a solution to the problem of how to find uh, integral points on a line. And uh, if this, this can be uh, uh, quite surprising at first that, uh, so this is an exercise for you, so you remember how to do that. Uh, find all the solutions, all the integer solutions of so two lines that are very similar, uh, they end up having completely different behavior that one will have infinitely many uh, points and the other one will not because of this. Okay, so uh, you can try that out. So, uh, so we're done. With n two degree f is one. Let's move on. How about n two degree of f is two. Well, now uh, your curve is uh, uh, a conic. Okay. I, I'm skipping. I'm I'm going to be skipping singular cases. If your quadratic polynomial is uh, singular in some way. It basically is the product of two lines. Okay? But you can reduce it to the case that it's the product of two lines, and we know how to find solutions in each line, forget about it. So I'm gonna look at curves that are <coughs> smooth, and that will be a product. Okay? So C now uh, will be something like this. And um, uh, the integers are a little, uh, uh, a little difficult, uh, but even uh, over Q, this is already a very uh, subtle issue, whether there's a point over Q, and it, it had to wait for thousands of years for somebody to come up with a method to tell whether there is a point over Q or not, given one conic. Okay, so um, what we see here is already a fascinating area of number theory, which is called the local to global principles, uh, which is one of the titles of one of the courses here. So over Q, um, we find an example of a, a local to global principle. Um, which is called uh, the Hasse principle, uh, uh, or or the, the theorem of Hasse Minkowski. And what does it say? It says that um, if there are points locally then there are points globally and vice versa. What globally and locally means here is the following. So, uh, so the theorem says that C has a rational point if and only if
<laughs> okay. Uh, C has a Q rational point. If and only if C has points locally. And locally means here, uh, like locally in the real numbers. If you look locally at a local interval, are there points in there? If I find points, then that's that there are points locally. But there is more to local, like in several courses today, you've already heard about the piatics. The piatic is another way to uh, study uh, the, the rational number. So we're going to look into all the possible ways that we can zoom in into the rational numbers in the, the real way and then in the piatic way. Um, so if there are points over the reals and over QP for all P, then there is a rational number and vice versa. Um, so, so this actually there's an appendix in, in my book about uh, a very short introduction to the piatics, but you, you will learn more. I think um, there were a lot of promises being made today and people who are going to do this and that uh, later on. Uh, but I think Liang in particular said that he will do some more of the piatics tomorrow. Um, you can see like a two, three page introduction to the piatics over there. Uh, for now, if you've had some elementary number theory, it just says that there are solutions modulo p to the n for every n. Okay? Um, so solutions, more or less, is solutions <coughs> uh, modulo p to the n for all p and all n. Okay. So if there are solutions modulo 2, 4, 8, 16, modulo 3, modulo 27, modulo 81, modulo 5, 125, and so on and so forth, that's all the powers I know, um, then, then there are solutions over here. This seems like a daunting uh, task to, to check that it seems like this is an infinite condition. And I'll never be able to check this. It turns out this is not so. You just have to check. If you multiply all the coefficients together, look at what primes are there, that is uh, those are the primes that you actually have to check. So you have to check that, and you don't have to go much farther than uh, modulo A and then modulo P for every other P, basically, um, in here. So, um, so this is something that you can actually do, okay, and check uh, fairly easily. And then it tells you, yes, there is a point. And then you let a computer run, and it finds it for you. Okay, so that basically solves in a very, very surprising way, and a very, uh, well, not the, surprising, but it's something that we would hope for, that basically these somehow encode all the arithmetic prime by prime, this encodes the real arithmetic, and if everything works out, then there should be a point there. How else would this work without there being uh, some sort of like, this is what we call global. So some global shadow of a point. These are the shadows at every uh, every completion. If there is a shadow everywhere, there's going to be something making a shadow. Okay. So, uh, for instance, if you look at conics, this has no points because it fails in the real numbers. No, uh, no real points. Okay. Um, what about this one? This one has uh, real points, right? The square root of 3 comma 0 is 1. But there are no solutions modulo 4. So there cannot be integer solutions, for instance. And that creates all sorts of problems. But there are no threshold solutions either. So mod, mod 4, it fails. Uh, what about this one? Well, that one, there are over the real, there are solutions modulo 4, because uh, 113 is 1 mod 4. And if you just start checking, there are solutions modulo everything. Uh, so where is the point? Can you see a point? Yes, it is probably. Okay, yes. 
Uh, so there are solutions over R. Yeah, you can check that uh, there are solutions over every QP, and has some encounter tell you, like, okay, go ahead and look now because there is one. Go, go and find it. And you can find it. Uh, uh, it turns out x equals uh, 7, y equals 8 is the solution. 49 plus 64 is 913. Okay, very good. All right, um, I have one point. Are there infinitely many points over Q? That's the easy part. Once uh, you, you were saying it very emphatically, what, what do you mean? Yeah, now you can just project from that point onto the line. Exactly. So now it's the easy part. Finding the one point, whether there is a point or not, that's terribly difficult. But finding all of the other ones, that was known long ago. So, uh, so once you have this, so this is a circle um, of radius, the square root of 113. Uh, we have one point somewhere here, and now what I can do is parameterize, um, but say by just draw a line like this, and uh, by the uh, the slopes of those lines, give me a point of intersection, and those points I claim they're also rational numbers. What are those three lines? What is it? What are those three lines? These are, so this is my point, my given point, 7, 8. Sure. And then those are just uh, lines where the, uh, the slope is rational. Okay. okay. Sure. So I can uh, perhaps, uh, what you can do if you want, you can put the, the origin of coordinates in here if you want, and then they're just y equals tx. Okay. Sure. And then move them around, find points of intersection, and because uh, these lines have coefficients over the rational numbers, when I intersect with this, say I put it here y equals, I don't know, uh, 2x plus 1, then this will give me a quadratic equation, but I know there is already one rational solution, so the second solution has to be rational as well, and that will give me an x coordinate that is rational, and the y coordinate is just a linear combination of that one, so this is also rational. Okay, so you can you can play with this. Um, so these are new points. Um, so uh, if you see, uh, I suggest you, if you've never done this or you are rusty, uh, that you do exercise 2.12.2 in the notes, uh, where you you do some parameterization um, of this sort. And uh, the thing is that this is called a stereographic projection, and you get every point. You get every rational point on this circle will be one of these. So you can go both ways. And if you do a line, the intersection is rational. If you have another one, you do the line, you see that it also comes from this construction. Okay, how about over Z? So the integral points is another. Uh, a uh, very typical chapter in elementary number theory books, which is uh, Pell's equation. Basically, over Z, any uh, uh, conic, you can reduce it, you can complete squares and do a bunch of transformations that reduces the problem uh, to finding points on Pell's equation, something of this sort. Uh, Something like that. And there are several methods that we have been found to solve Pell's equation. For instance, I don't know if, how many of you have uh, know about continued fractions. Okay. So using continued fractions, you can actually find solutions to Pell's equation and uh, find all the solutions to Pell's equation and so on. So I'm not going to go into that. But basically, we also know how to find the integral points and conics. By the way, if it's a if it's a circle like this, you don't have to go uh, that route. If it's a circle, then, well, it's this. If there's only finitely many possibilities for x and y, you just check them all, or do some congruences, you can see, you can do a bunch of things. But it's a finite computation. This is, 
the Pell's equation uh, comes when, uh, so the conics can be classified into uh, ellipses, parabolas, or hyperbolas. The Pell's equation is the hardest one is the hyperbola case, the parabola case, the circle case, those are easy to uh, parameterize. Okay, the point being, we know how to do also for quadratic equations, but there's a whole like very rich theory that went was created just for each one of these cases, which is the stables of number theory. Okay. So uh, what about the next step? Where were we? Now, n equals 2, degree f equals 2. Okay. Humanity is doing very well so far. Okay. So what about uh, cubic equation? So c is now a plane cubic. So it is something like this. I'm not going to write all the coefficients now. It goes something like this. Okay. So this is a very interesting case because unlike the previous cases, uh, uh, when we had one rational point, we had infinitely many of them. And we had both. There are sometimes no points. No rational points, that implies no key points. Okay, so there are examples where there are no rational points whatsoever. But in this case, uh, there are all possible flavors come into place. That there are, uh, there can be no key points. Only finitely many, the finitely many being positive, so a few. Uh, finitely many points. Or infinitely many points. Okay, so it's uh, the first stage where things become really interesting, that there is the whole uh, array of possibilities uh, that can happen. Um, but the the bad news is that here's where the humanity uh, has uh, stopped. We don't know how to do it, essentially. We, we don't know how to solve this either over here or over C. We're stuck. So, um, so here's the bad news. The bad news is that this ideal world of Hasse and Minkowski where we were seeing shadows, and you know, there's shadows, there's a tree. Now we see shadows, and sometimes we see nothing. There's something casting a shadow that doesn't exist over here. Okay. So what happens is that the local to global principle fails, um, and we don't know how miserably. That's one of the conjectures of the field. Um, that we hope is not too bad, but it fails. Uh, so the local to goal principle that uh, we know uh, that it fails. So um, so there are cubics that have um, solutions over R over QP but there are no Q solutions. Okay, uh, the first such example of uh, such things is called uh, Selmer's example. <coughs> and it's uh, 3x cubed plus 4, y cubed equals 5. Um, that, that has such a property. There are real points, there are points over every QP, but there are no rational solutions. So that that's very uh, tough news for us, because that was such a good method to find at least uh, some computational uh, method to find uh, whether there are points or not. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, the bad news team keep piling up, um, which is that uh, this also fails to some degree that 
if I have one solution, can I find all the other ones? Um, no, no. Um, so we, we do not have an algorithm uh, uh, to find the, uh, the Q rational uh, points on C. Uh, even if we know one point, okay. Uh, so this is the frontier of of uh, the theory of differential equations, and this is elliptic curve. This is why we are interested because a, uh, a cubic equation, a cubic plane, uh, plane cubic with at least one point, that is an elliptic curve, a, a non-singular plane cubic. So, uh, a non-singular uh, plane cubic C with at least one resistance, with at least one Q point, is called an elliptic curve. That's great. So, uh, but I, I started uh, defining elliptic curves in, in a much more concise way. There was this very short, neat equation. And now we're saying that every cubic like that is an elliptic curve. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but let's, let's just like, Okay, this is very depressing. Can we uh, can we move on? Maybe this is a very bad case, and we know how to do the rest. The rest is just a mess. Um, and and that, I'm not even saying n equals three. It's n equals two and higher degree. That is even worse. So. Um, I'm actually going to put five here um, because. Some kind, some plane cubics with degree f uh, four. Those are also uh, elliptic curves. Um, so the, the the thing is that beyond um, uh, what you realize at this point is that you've been looking at the wrong invariant. The degree of f is not the right thing to look at. Is the number of holes this curve has? Oh, what are you talking about? So. Uh, so what we are going to do now is that we were looking at our curve, we were looking at over Q, sometimes we were looking at, uh, looking at it over the real numbers, right, to see if there were points, but look at it over the complex numbers and let's see what it looks like over there. So if you go back, if you go all the way to the, uh, to the complex numbers, if your curve is given by a polynomial, it's non-singular, then it will give you what's called a ribbon surface. So it's some nice, um, 